Now, here's one more thing, is with strings, we can concatenate them. That means to take one string, one sentence, and append it to another string or sentence. Let's type uh, intro as the variable name is equal to, hello, my name is, and that's all it's going to be. And I'm also going to create another variable name, Caleb. So now we have intro, we have name. How do we put these together? This is a process called concatenation, or concat for short. To merge these strings together, there are various different ways to do this in JavaScript, but the most popular one is to use the plus symbol. So let's create a new variable, and it's called sentence is equal to intro plus name. Now, this looks like it's math, but it's not. And this is why data types are very, very important. When we add a string together using this plus symbol, we are not actually adding anything together. What we're doing is we're joining them together. So if I hit enter on this, we should get, hello, my name is Caleb, just like that. Now, anytime I type sentence, the variable sentence, we get, hello, my name is Caleb. Now, why did that happen? Why, why is it when we type 12 plus 20, we get 32, but when we type hello plus something, it merges the sentences together. The strings are put together. Now, in our last lesson, we talked about data types, and I keep bringing this up. And this is why data types are important to know. In languages like PHP, PHP doesn't really care too much. It'll try to add a string with a number, and it will fail because it's very loosely written. In Python, in JavaScript, in Node, that's unacceptable. These are more strict languages, meaning that you can only add integers with integers or integers with floats because you can add numbers with other numbers, but you cannot add a sentence with a number. It doesn't work that way. When you add one sentence with another sentence, it becomes one long sentence. But what happens if we try to apply some other math? Let's type, uh, let's put the word long in here and multiply, multiply this by 20. We get this beautiful little thing called NAN, not a number. It stands for not a number. Now, why do we get this? Because you cannot multiply the word or the string long 20 times. You can't multiply letters and numbers. They don't mix. It's like oil and water. They just don't mix, unfortunately. And so that's why learning your data types is very important because if you ever get this, now you know that, oh, one of my variables is probably not an integer or is not a float. And for that reason, I need to change something. Now, we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but I want to show you one more thing. I'm going to type number. Uh, actually, let's change that name. Uh, the num is equal to, uh, let's say, 500, uh, sorry, 315. We know that's a string because it has quotations around it. What if we did the num times 20? JavaScript is smart enough to realize that in this string, is actually a number and it did the multiplication for us so that's acceptable but what if i'm just going to overwrite this the num is equal to 315 is the number so now we have a new string in there and we type the num times 20. again we get not a number because javascript looks at this as a whole and says okay well i know there's a number in there but this whole thing is not a number so that's unacceptable so i'm going to throw you a new little error or I'm going to return the value called not a number to you. Now, if you wanted to uh, actually be quite the stickler with your data types, and this is a very good thing, if you wanted to be very clean with your data types, I would say by all means go for it as long as it doesn't make your code too bloated. So if we go back and we say the num is equal to 315, but that's in a string, and we wanted to convert that, because if we type the num now, it's still in a string, but if we said the num is equal to number the num and we're pa just passing a simple variable in there and we're actually passing itself type enter now we have just a number and you can tell because there's no quotations the color even changed it's not red it's blue now and every time we type the num it's 315. so that's a quick way of parsing 
I guess your strings that are only holding numbers into a legitimate integer. I'm just going to go ahead and clear this. And we're going to do one more example. And we're going to turn a string into an array. So we type string or str. We have our original string. We've never overwritten this. And if we put in uh, a new variable, let's call it arr, short for array, is equal to str.split. Where do we want to split this? Well, we want to break up each word. So we're just going to put a simple space in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to break on each little space inside of this string. And everything in between each space is going to be an array value. I hit enter, it gives us eight. And now we can do uh, arr.length is eight. There's eight pieces in here, eight different words. Now arr.length, we know this from string. String.length gave us how many letters are in it, but array gives us how many different objects, or uh, objects is a, an ambiguous word, but it gives us how many different pieces are in this list. And in this, we see that there are eight. So now if I just type ARR, I get uh, all of these together. And if I wanted to put these back together, instead of using split, we use join. Create a new variable called ARR joined and type ARR dot join. And what do we want to join it on? What is the glue that we want to put this broken sentence back together with? Well, we could put it back together with uh, a simple space or something, but let's do something a little more creative. Uh, if we use a dash, it'll look a lot more like a URL. And now instead of spaces, we have dashes. And if we want to create uh, a URL from this, we type URL is equal to AR joined dot to lowercase. And now we have what looks like a URL fragment or a query string. So if you went to facebook.com slash, you know, the dash blue dash blanket dash is dash so on and so on. It looks a lot like a URL. So now we're, we're turning strings into what look like actual URLs. And this is very, very valuable when creating things like single page applications or taking user input, for example, uh, when someone creates a new Facebook page and turning that into a uh, a URL that will be in the, you know, the facebook.com slash whatever your, your group or Facebook page name is. So now we're actually getting a lot more useful and we still haven't done anything with a DOM with, with the actual HTML, but we're creating very useful things here. So again, not super, super exciting, but incredibly useful. And these don't just stop here. There are tons and tons of other methods that we can use. If we just type str dot we get a long list of things that we can do. In fact, that's actually what I want you to do is in your console, create a, a new string, uh, put a sentence in there, could be anything, make it about 40 ish characters like we did in this example in this video. And let's just see what these do. What happens when you type dot bold? Oh, well, it returns a function. Well, that's interesting. What is that? That might be worth a little bit of a Google. But play around with some of these because these are all very, very useful. You can do the same thing with array. How we have an array here, error dot, and then it gives you a list of what you're looking for here. Do you want to concatenate these, bring these together? Do you want to uh, shift these, slice these, sort these? Uh, you could do all sorts of stuff in here. Now, JavaScript is not just limited to this function list. Like this list is, it's nice, it's convenient, but that's not everything JavaScript has to offer. So as your homework for this video, uh, go ahead, create a string, um, type in whatever your variable name is, hit dot, and take a look at some of these. If any of these catch your eye, you're really interested in what they might possibly do, uh, go and Google them. Because here's one of the secrets to being a great web developer, and I'm not even kidding you. If you talk to any senior dev, they're all going to tell you this, that the the real superpower behind being a great developer is knowing how to ask questions and knowing how to Google. Because in the world of programming, front end and back end, there are so many things out there that you have to remember, you're not going to remember them all. Uh, that's just, that's a fact of life. Our brains don't work like that. And why remember it all when it's all easily accessible through the old Google machine? So go ahead, give that a shot.
I uh, hope you've learned a lot of useful things in here. Uh, I hope that in the next few lessons we start getting into something a little more, um, I guess, interesting where we can start manipulating the DOM and uh, really making your page a lot more interactive and dynamic.